Yeah, you can you can get these online. Amazon. You can yeah. <laughs> you, yeah, Amazon. Free shipping. Amazon. Yeah, you can you can also get uh, use the temperature ones. Mm -hmm. They have those uh, finger thermometers that you can also do biofeedback with. They're pretty cool. Okay, so what we're gonna do is this is actually the plug in use I think is what this is for. So anyways, okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get this started and we're gonna get a baseline and we're gonna order that. <laughs> Okay, we get a baseline of where you're at. Okay, so we what we want you to do is we want you to think about so you here. So this is where you're gonna pay attention to. So we just want you to not think about your relationship at all. You can look at it. And what biofeedback is also about impacting you, right? So you're doing pretty good right now. You're landing in the green range, right, right about here. And so now what we want you to do is we want you to pay pay attention to whatever's going on in your relationship that's causing you distress. And imagine yourself. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> I'm sure the difficulty of class, right? Totally. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, there you around. go. You may ask you about it? Yeah. So I have to go to my oh wow. So <laughs> I have to go to my boyfriend's brother's uh, wedding. It's in Pennsylvania, yeah. but he is the um, he's the best man, and his ex is the maid of honor. So that's my distressor right oh, now. Is I literally have to go meet his, his ex, his ex who has like emotionally abused him. So that'll be super fun. What are you worried about? Um, well, I'm actually worried about like how I, uh, I'm worried about how she's going to act. I'm not, I'm not too bad about like for me and what I'm going to do, but I, if she's like does anything to him, like if she's does anything to me, I'd be totally fine. I'd be like, okay, well, she's just being stupid. But if she's does something to him and like did something again, like why? Like why are you doing this? I don't know. I don't, I don't so, know. Up, so you would be upset. Yeah. Upsetting. Yeah. What do you feel? I just, I don't know, I feel angry that it happened, and I feel angry that it has to happen, and that I have to go. <laughs> and that I have to spend money to go there, too. It kind of sucks, you know? Yeah. Like, having to spend the money to go to a place where you have to meet your right. boyfriend's ex who emotionally abused him, so, right. yeah. Just having to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be entertaining. <laughs> entertaining. Yeah. Okay, all right, see it working? Yeah. Yeah. She almost went over the line. <laughs> she almost did. And what was that? What she was talking, she was talking about? about? She said, if he messes with me, it's fine, and it went lower. But she said, but if he does something to him, and it like, it <laughs> flirted with him. A little bit. Yeah, <laughs> good. Okay, so let's get it back down. See if we can do that. So yeah, just take, take some deep breaths. Because everything's going to be okay, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> it's not sitting down there. Huh? No, it'll be, it'll, I just don't want to go. <laughs> that makes sense. Oh yeah. So feel better if you didn't have to. Yes, that'd be yeah. very nice. Okay, this is really in interesting. Just on a on a side note, um, one of the misuses of mindfulness is to encourage someone to be mindful in the midst of anxiety and lower their anxiety rather than work through their anxiety. Mm -hmm. So I actually shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> yeah. So like, the deep breathing is more of a defending rather than it's actually a way of keep yourself from getting so flooded. That you can continue to push through it, right? To come to a state of uh, conversion where you're able to accept it mm -hmm. would lower your state overall. But there should be a, uh, a heightened state for a little bit, but just not to where it's gone up in the red and then we pull it down and it's really low. So we, so we have to, so we would need to talk about um, what exactly. you're facing, yeah, yeah, and how that might feel for you to see him, right, suffering yeah. a little bit, maybe what he could be hurt by that, yeah, right. And you don't want to. More than I would be for myself, which is interesting. The way I've been, I've been thinking about it a lot. It's been, and y'all, I've known for a year, so. Oh, so yeah. now it's just coming closer. Now it's just coming closer and freaking out. So. Right. Yeah, it went back up. <laughs> right. yeah, but you're, but you're talking about is a lot of care. Yeah. You have for him, so like you have it for him. Yeah. And that's why it's a good thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
the perfect person to do this is my anxiety just kind of slipped it down. <laughs> well, it's, well, it's almost like uh, by saying that it's going to be okay, it's your way of keeping it okay, but it's not really okay. Right. Mm. Right. So, like, you Depends. can say I'm okay, but inside you're not feeling okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, what if you don't know that I'm not okay? You said that. So it has to have an impact, right? Mm-hmm. It's really, inter- it's really. Sorry, I'm not trying to use this public anything. No, really it's really fine. Um, it's interesting, isn't it? Interesting that even defense, the anxiety starts to spike mm-hmm. in the defense, and then it's actually in the full expression mm-hmm. of the experience that the anxiety begins to break down. Mm-hmm. When you guys were learning in helping skills, like not that long ago, but were you wondering, like, why are we going for the pain? Mm-hmm. Why, why are we asking for full expression? the actual physiological response is that it just lowers the anxiety. Mm-hmm. We go into more, you go into more like a core state of vitality mm-hmm. and the authenticity of what you're experiencing, which reduces your overall sympathetic, um, sympathetic nervous response to go down, go down. Mm-hmm. Even though it feels, it can feel frightening, it's a different kind of frightening. Like scared is different from anxious. Anxious is the fear of the state. <coughs> to say to her she can get her a little bit lower. Anybody identify with the fear? That would be a way sometimes of regulating someone else. Mm-hmm. Okay, let me see if I can help you with it. Okay, so I can identify mm-hmm. with what you're going through. So my wife just went through cancer. Yeah. Right? And so it's just a horrible thing for her to go through. So I too felt for her how awful um, it was to her watch her. Working our way down a little bit, mm-hmm. so resonating and connecting, and, right? Not feeling as alone. She bring, she bring the presence with her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool, huh? Mm-hmm. Okay, so they hook him up in this love lab, and they have to monitor this. Mm-hmm. And so things that would maybe seem neutral, all of a sudden there's a spike, and they go, "Hmm, what is it? They're, they're coding. What is it that they're talking about?" Mm-hmm. It's also spiking what's going on internally inside mm-hmm. of them. So we can start making some correlations. Make sense? Mm-hmm. Anybody else want to try? Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I bring these up to some avoidant fetch guys in my session. And just to see, like, they're like, I'm really not feeling anything. And hook it up and they can say both. <laughs> like, really? really? What I really need is a remote control to do it anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
<laughs> the comments, I'm still pushing it out. Yeah. See? <laughs> I should lecture with you, Don. You guys can see how <laughs> Okay. We actually have a full biofeedback lab here at NMU. Wow. We have an observation room, and that's 233. Yeah, have you ever seen back there? There's an observation room, and then we have all the equipment. That's so cool. To do biofeedback. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we just, we just need yeah. to get passionate about it, mm -hmm. and then we'll do uh, feedback. All right, all right. So there's our love lab. So what were the results of the love lab? Yeah. Can you release this presentation to us? Yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> that was a Freudian slip of mine. Not releasing it on purpose. Right? I only release those things that are really valuable. <laughs> um, yes, I will. Do you want it now? Are you, guys, are you guys typing on it, or can I just release really it in the class? Okay. All right. So most relationships, a conflict is not solvable, but is caught in perpetual patterns. Well, this is similar to some of the attachment-based EFT stuff, so the gridlock. Gridlock is about emotional escalation, the whining up in response to the four horsemen, which we'll talk about here in a minute. So the basis for dialogue and conflict is finding the meaning. What does the dialogue represent? So that's sort of looking underneath what they're talking about, which is very consistent also with looking for those unmet attachment needs and longing. Absence of any positive affect during conflict results in escalation. That sort of seems like a duh. <laughs> so absence of any positive affect during conflict results in escalation. So how do you develop positive affect in the midst of a conflict without it being um, a defense, right? Like laughter to lower anxiety. General startups are important. So when we enter your conflict, gentle startups, and we'll talk about that. And then five positives are <coughs> one negative when discussing an area of disagreement. So couples that are out of this five to one ratio are 99% more likely to divorce. In those. He was predicting divorce within a 99% success rate based on the five to one ratio. Yeah, five negative positives to one, to one negative. Yeah. So in, um, that's when discussing an area of disagreement. That's not just in marriage. That's when it comes to disagreements, mm -hmm. right? Which is even more difficult to have thought of in mind than in general marriage, so. Okay, so five positives for everyone there. Let me start by talking about <laughs> what it is we learned that allows us to predict divorce or stability with very high accuracy. The first thing we found was that if you take a look at the ratio of positive stuff during conflict. Things like interest, asking questions, being nice to one another, being kind, being affectionate, being empathetic. And you look at all the negative stuff like criticism, hostility, anger, uh, hurt feelings, and you take the ratio of positive to negative. In relationships that stay together, that ratio turns out to be five to one. There's five times as many positive things going on in relationships that work as negative. That's an interesting equation. And it sort of suggests that if you do something negative to hurt your partner's feelings, you know, that you have to make up for it with five positive things. So the equation is not balanced in terms of positive and negative. Negative has a lot more ability to inflict pain and damage than positive things have to heal and bring you closer. Now, the couples who wound up divorced, that ratio was 0.8 to 1. So there was a little more negativity than positivity in couples who were heading for divorce. Point eight to one. Okay, so just sort of imagine this five to one ratio and how to accomplish that in the midst of disagreement. What are the five things that you infuse in, in, in an argument? Right. Very good. Because you're not in a state in which to do that, especially if you've gone limbic. You're not really in a state to be moving in a direction. So you have to have a certain amount of cortical override to be able to continue to infuse positive affect and experience. I think there has to be a certain amount of, of attachment stability in order to be able to infuse that. Right? It can't be representative of unmet attachment needs or you're not going to positive override because you're more in your sort of limbic response which is about self-protection and survival. So you can see how this could be very difficult and how this, this kind of concept is really useful for people who um, can actually implement that. Um, because they're not being threatened at a deeper level. Okay, so, um, positive, did I just go over this? No, okay, positive and override is crucial, given the benefit of the doubt. 